this is the new Mercedes A-Class and uh, I was present at a media launch event uh, which was just before the opening of the uh, Geneva Motor Show this year and ever since I saw this car I couldn't wait to get behind the wheel but before I tell you how it is to drive um, let me tell you a few things about uh, what we get uh, for a price which starts at just below 24,000 euros First of all, you get a new design, which makes the A-Class look desirable for someone who's not 85. Mercedes even hopes that people like myself, or younger, may actually want to buy this car. The new A-Class looks fresh and dynamic. Forget the new Audi A3, BMW 1 Series. Perhaps the new Volvo V40 can compete in the modern design department. At first glance, I couldn't believe it, but this car is actually the size of uh, Volkswagen Golf or uh, Ford Focus, for that matter. And uh, other players in the premium segment, so BMW 1 Series, uh, Audi A3, Volvo V40, they're all pretty much the same size. However, uh, when it comes to uh, boot space, only Volvo V40 is smaller. Here in the Mercedes A-Class, we have 341 liters, double floor job, so that's actually quite good but 341 liters it's nothing to write home about really at first glance the interior looks money you can even feel it in the back there may be no gadgets to play with here but check out these leather seats and the lighting system in the headrests cool i'm about five foot seven and a half so i have enough leg room and headroom here however this big transmission tunnel here in the middle means that the middle seat is best for your armrest. Now the seat itself it's quite short so I wouldn't want to spend a couple of hours here on a longer journey and because of the sloping roof line you also have to watch out for your head when you're trying to get out. In the front, it's more luxury. Uh, for a couple of years, Mercedes has been styling uh, cabins of all the new cars, all the new models, uh, to make them look like the SLS. And I really, really like it. I mean, in here, you really feel like this car is worth around 38,000 euros. Well, this particular example is, but we'll get to the price list later. A few words about the seats, though. Um, well, they may look like a million bucks, but they're not particularly comfortable and I don't like this uh, headrest here, which uh, I didn't find a way to adjust. So it's quite bent, as you might see. And if I want to sit up straight, I have to sit with my head bent down like this, so that's not no good. And if I lean back, I'm finding it a bit difficult to reach the steering wheel, despite it having reach and rake adjustment. As this is a Merc, you can get all sorts of optional equipment on it. So uh, here we have the parking assistant, the lane assistant, collision mitigating system, blind spot assistant. Speaking of blind spots, visibility is really obstructed uh, by the B, C pillars and this uh, passenger seat here. But this sunroof is worth considering. In many cars, driving with an open sunroof above 70-80 km per hour is unbearable because of the wind turbulence. In the A-Class, you can drive with speeds above 100 km per hour with the roof open. However, this and a few other extras will easily bring the price up from the entry 24 grand to the upper 30-something thousand euros. This particular model is equipped with a 7-speed double-clutch gearbox which is fine as long as all it has to do is uh, upshift. However, if you want to uh, kick down, it takes ages and the gearbox gets lost. I mean, uh, even if it's in manual mode, which you can steer with these uh, paddle shifts here or in the sports mode, I mean, it just gets lost. As you might have noticed, uh, the automatic gearbox is operated by this little shift here in the steering column, which is fine, especially that uh, as a bonus, uh, you get an additional big cup holder here where the uh, manual shifter would usually be. And you know, it's enough to fit your big latte or whatever you like. However, this shifter here mm, is not 
designed to operate the modes, the driving modes you have on this car, because uh, you can switch it into sports, manual, economy mode. And um, well, you would expect these buttons to be somewhere here, or you know, maybe this button, or maybe you know, put this thing down or something. No, it doesn't work like that. Uh, this button is actually somewhere down here next to the hazard lights, heated seats and so on. And uh, the letters are so small, you can barely see it. This A180 Blue Efficiency model is powered by a modest uh, 1.6 petrol engine which coughs up 122 brake horsepower. It goes from 0 to 100 in about uh, 9 seconds. And if you press it hard enough, it sounds okay and it doesn't have problems doing motorway speeds. And this is where the seventh gear comes into play. So, it's all right. Now, let's not kid ourselves. Uh, this car, the new Mercedes A-Class, at least with this 1.6 engine, is as exciting to drive as, pff, I don't know, a sailboat when there is no wind. The suspension is on the firm side. You can feel all the bumps. But then, on the other hand, when you go into bends, the car rolls a bit. I mean, there is sufficient body roll for you to kind of move around and these seats only look like they have good lateral support. They don't. And then there are the plastics. Okay, so here at the top of the dashboard you get this nice leather, but as you go down and start scratching and touching, the plastics get rougher and rougher. And here, next to where the dual climate controls are, Honestly, in a car which costs almost 38,000 euros. I like the styling on the new A-Class. I like the way it looks on the outside. I like the SLS-like interior. And uh, I don't mind it's not as exciting to drive as a BMW 1 Series because I think it's better than the Audi A3 or Volvo V40. What I do mind, however, is that uh, on a Ford Focus or Volkswagen Golf, you can get slightly better quality of interior, especially down low. And, uh, you know, this is an expensive car and I would like everything to be top-notch from top to the bottom. Interestingly enough, you can get a similarly specced Focus for not much less money. So I'm wondering whether the premium segment has become so affordable or uh, perhaps the mass segment has so much so good equipment these days.